want to talk about COVID and coronavirus from a political standpoint. And we're going to invite into the stream Scott Stringer. He is New York City's controller, and he is launching a probe into the mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio's coronavirus response. Scott, it's good to see you here. I, I got to ask you, though, we'll learn things from your, your study, but it's after the fact. Honestly, what good does it do to launch this kind of probe? Well, first of all, and it's great to be back with all of you, but the purpose of my job is to monitor city agencies, make sure that in real time they are meeting their obligations to the people in the city. And there is no more important look at uh, how we are dealing with this coronavirus and how it relates to the economy. I want to know what we knew when we knew it and what did we do about it at the beginning of the virus, because it's important going forward to understand the protocols that are in place and also what we're not doing so that if we have to deal with this long term and we may, it's important for us to be nimble and make sure we hold agencies accountable and the mayor is no exception. So Scott, it's Julie here. So is this a fairly standard thing that is done after various crises in the city, after Hurricane Sandy, for example? Um, and if so, what were some of the lessons learned from past crises that maybe weren't put into play this time or were put into play? I don't know. Well, it's a, a great question. And actually, uh, Hurricane Sandy is a perfect example because I became controller. And the first thing our office literally did was initiate an investigation as to the government's response on Sandy. We held hearings in every borough. We talked to hundreds and hundreds of people who were victimized, people who lost their home. And then we found that the contractors and the outside consultants that were put in place did, did people real harm, losing paperwork, setting back that recovery. And so it's appropriate, certainly the way I function in the last seven years as controller, to once again turn attention to what we knew and when we knew it, but also what are we doing? There's a lot of controversy today of the mayor engaging in con con uh, contract tracing, uh, contact tracing rather, uh, moving it from the health department to health hospitals uh, uh, corporation. That is something that we have to watch very closely to see if we are actually in the health realm and we're not getting caught up in the bureaucracy. There seems to be some real political turmoil within City Hall uh, between the police department and the health commissioner. And I'll tell you something, I got no time for this. We have got to get our arms around testing if we're going to bring back this economy. Many of you talk about how it's going to open a V or a U. I worry about whether we can fight the virus and also slowly turn on our economy, but we have to walk and chew gum at the same time. We've got to get this right. So this is something I care about. Scott, um, you know, you are the city's chief financial officer, and we had a report from the National League of Cities just yesterday that said New York and all of the major cities in the country could lose up to $360 billion, that's with a B, $360 billion worth of revenue through 2022. You haven't announced that you're running for mayor, but you know the finances. This city, what does New York do? The mayor's announced cuts. You've been critical about the proposed cuts. Do they? Does New York City and do the other major cities in this country need to have some kind of tax convention and rework their tax codes going forward? Well, look, the, the job of the mayor and of the government is to confront the budget crisis head on. This city didn't save in good time. We didn't put away enough money in a rainy day fund for, for something like that. Now, we could not have totally being the health crisis, but there's enough in our city's history, going back to 9-11, the city's fiscal crisis in the 70s, that said we should save more. Now going forward, we have to ask our agencies to look at inefficiencies, capture those dollars so we don't have to put more people on the street, hurt social services. The mayor has to come up with a real economic plan, both for 2020 and 2021. It has to happen. And one of the things that we've got to do as a city, and we've done this before, is we've got to go to Washington and demand a stimulus package that is going to aid uh, states and localities, because without it, we are not going to be able to come back. Think about this. Uh, there's been close to 190,000 corona cases, and New York City gets $9,000 per corona case from the federal government. Uh, Montana, which has had a few hundred corona cases, gets $2.7 million dollars from the federal government. So you could see the politics at play, but this time it's not just about back and forth presidential politics. This is about life and death. 
And I'm very concerned that we are not getting the stimulus that we need. Hopefully this package will be better than the last. Let's stay on the topic of politics, um, because I think I heard you say in the beginning that you want to look into this. This isn't about a political issue, but the, the friction from the city and state level has been pretty well documented in New York, whether it's Mayor Bill de Blasio or Governor Cuomo. I, I'm curious if you feel comfortable that that has been smoothed over in the communication for reopening here in, in the state. I mean, has that improved over the last two months? And do you feel like it is going smoothly enough to, to be able to roll out the reopening eventually to New York City? I think Governor Cuomo uh, has spent a lot of time thinking about this uh, reopening. Obviously, we're going to start this uh, beyond New York City and upstate communities. Look, the mayor has to work with the governor. Uh, this is a health emergency. That politics now has to turn to absolute cooperation. And while I have been critical the mayor's response on so many levels. I also want to tell people that I've got to work with City Hall. We have to work together with the mayor's office to find common ground. Look, I said we should put be prepared to put air conditioners in some of our public housing developments for our seniors. The mayor said, yes, let's do that today. So even though we do have a back and forth, which I do think is healthy, we also work collaboratively behind the scenes to do what's best for the people. And I'm going to support the mayor and the governor in getting us to open safely and with a long range financial plan. And also we have to reimagine what New York City is going to be about. How do we open up our restaurants, our cultural institutions? Uh, I got a skin in the game and I know Julie does. What are we going to do about school? and how are we gonna make sure kids get the education they need? I feel so bad for these kids who work so hard and are now sidelined and the heroes, our teachers are doing everything they can, but we also have to lead in this city in terms of educating our children. Scott, Dan Roberts here. Uh, hey, just briefly, you mentioned that the probe is gonna find out you know, what we knew, when we knew it, how good of a job we did. And, and you mentioned that there is controversy I'm not sure if we got just straight up uh, your opinion before you get the results of this probe. How do you think New York did through all of this? Look, I, I think right now we have to gather information. We have to talk to health experts. We have to talk to people on the ground. I do know this. Uh, this virus discriminates. It went for the people who were most vulnerable, the people with pre-existing health conditions, hit people uh, in communities of color in a way that... That, 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 that hurt and will leave a lasting mark in our city. The question is, what was the government response to helping those communities pre-virus? And what have we done, if anything, to make sure those communities are gonna be protected going forward? So that's one area that we have spoken out about. We've talked about frontline workers, the fact that people of color are the ones who are delivering food and taking care of uh, our family members and the like. So there's a lot that will go into this. It is not a probe to do a probe. It's a probe to make government better, to make sure that as we confront this virus in the months and maybe years ahead, that we have the best set of protocols in place. Nothing is more important right now. And my job is to ask the tough questions. Uh, mayors are never happy with their controllers. It's just the way it is. That doesn't concern me. What concerns me is how do we build a city government uh, both in terms of emergency workers, an emergency response. When did we start to realize that? Did we have the best response? Were we overly influenced by Trump? There's so many questions that go into it. And we're going to do this in the most, you know, in, in, a, in a sensitive way because we're still fighting the pandemic. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.